Welcome to Working with Virtual Appliances. I'm Richard Park. I'm a Senior Product Manager here at Sourcefire. I'm here today to talk more about how to configure and deploy the virtual appliances uh, in your VMware environment. So I'll just spend a few minutes explaining the benefits of these virtual appliances. The first is our virtual 3D sensor and it offers you the most visibility and flexibility in securing your virtual network. There are three primary benefits. Uh, the first is taking back the visibility you lose when you virtualize. The second is about uh, the fact that virtual deployment is easier than physical deployment. And third, the virtual 3D sensor can help you get better prepared for PCI audits. If you want any more detail on any of these benefits, uh, we uh, have a white paper called Strategies for Securing Virtual Environments, which is available, and so please, uh, you can check that out. Uh, the second virtual appliance is our virtual defense center, and it's really about uh, quicker and easier deployment uh, of your defense center management console. We're going to go straight into the process of uh, conf deploying and configuring your virtual appliances. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is make sure you have access to a VMware ESX or ESXi server. Uh, if you don't happen to have one already installed or deployed, um, you can download the uh, VMware ESXi software for free, uh, as well as a license key. Just go to the VMware.com website and uh, go to downloads and then deploy them on some available hardware. Um, you're also going to need access to a Windows box because the client which is used to manage the VMware server is Windows only. So in this case uh, I have a, a Windows machine and so once you've uh, installed your, your VMware server software on your hardware, um, point your web browser toward the IP address of that ESX or ESXi server and it will take you to a page looking something like this. Uh, this is just a welcome page and so what you want to do is you can download the uh, the, the VMware client uh, software straight from this page here. It's called uh, vSphere Client because uh, vSphere is the same as VMware ESX4. Um, just save it to your, your desktop or whatever folder that you want. And while this is going on, you can also download the Sourcefire virtual appliances at the same time. So uh, just go to the Sourcefire support site and log in. And uh, you want to then go to the, the download section here. Uh, choose uh, a version 4.9, uh, product category software. Uh, just go down here to the uh, software install uh, section and you'll see here there's two virtual appliances, the virtual uh, sensor as well as the virtual defense center and you want to download those too. Um, once you've downloaded them you'll need to extract the tarred and gzip files. Uh, for Windows I know that the, uh, uh, the WinRAR tool will work well from rarlabs.com um, but any tool that you know of will work fine. Uh, once you've uh, extracted those files you'll have, you'll have two of them. Uh, the first is your, uh, your .vmdk which is your, your sensor, your appliance image and the second is your OVF, which is your descriptor. And, uh, and once you do that, um, you can then uh, install your uh, VMware client executable, just double click on it and, and get it up and running. And then once you do that, then uh, you will be ready to go in terms of starting the, uh, the VMware uh, server configuration process. If you've installed the VMware client, you now want to run it, so just double click on it here. And it'll prompt you for the uh, username and password. Um, so you'll need to uh, get these either from your VMware admin or just uh, create an account yourself. Uh, so just put, um, I'm just going to use the root password here. And log in. Uh, when you run this, you'll most likely get a warning about uh, the server having an untrusted certificate. So you can either put on a, a certificate yourself or just choose to ignore that message and uh, have it ignore that message um, from here going forward. So now that the client is uh, up and running, uh, the uh, where we're going to spend most of our time is actually in the inventory section. So, no matter where you are on the client when you start, just uh, go to the home button here and hit inventory. And this is where you're going to spend most of your time. And our first step here is to deploy the uh, OVF templates. That's basically what the virtual appliance is. So just go to uh, file here and go to deploy OVF template. On the first page, uh, it's going to ask you for deploying either from a file or from a URL. So just uh, hit Browse here and choose the location of the OVF, uh, which you download for the virtual appliance. And just hit Next and just accept all the defaults until the end. Uh, you can change the name here to whatever you want. Hit Next, uh, accept defaults, and hit Finish. And then you're going to start the deployment process for the uh, virtual appliance. So now that you've deployed your virtual appliances, the next step is to turn them on. So in this case, I have two, the virtual DC and the sensor. So there's a couple ways to turn them on. Uh, easiest way is to click on it and right click and hit power and power on. You'll also need to open a console window so you can see what's going on and also uh, do the login and, and things like that. Just go to open console. Uh, the other way of uh, powering on a, a, an appliance is to just click on it here and uh, go to the inventory window and do pretty much the same thing here. So 
go to inventory, power on, and then inventory, open a console. Uh, one of the most important things about turning on the virtual appliance for the first time is that uh, it will take uh, a good bit of time, mainly because um, it has to go through these, uh, what's called a first boot process, which is an initialization to establish the database and other things like that. So it could take uh, about 20 or 30 minutes. It's very important that you not interrupt this process um, while it's going on, or you'll probably corrupt the uh, virtual appliance and you'll have to start over again uh, from scratch. So um, in this case, uh, I've already gone through that, so I don't need to do it again. Um, so my sensor is, is up and running. So I'm just going to, uh, you, you see there's a Linux prompt here. I'm just going to log in the uh, username as root, and the password is source file with capital S. Uh, the rest of it is lowercase. And you notice the, uh, the DC is also uh, getting up and running here. So I'm, I'm, in order to exit this window, I need to hit Control-Alt, get my cursor back, uh, click into here. Once again, it's root, uh, password is source fire. And the next step then is to uh, configure the IP address information. So on the virtual DC, uh, the command is uh, user local sf bin uh, configure dash network. It's going to ask you for uh, standard information such as IP address, uh, default gateway, uh, things like that. So um, that's pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and take care of that. Uh, for the purpose of time, I'm not going to do it. Um, the sensor is a little bit different, so the command for configuring all that is config.pl. And it'll ask you for, it'll take you through the, the EULA process for user license, and, and uh, you can change the uh, IP address or set the IP address and that sort of thing. The main step here that you need to do is uh, set the IP address for the defense center here. So because the a virtual sensor has no local GUI, uh, you can't uh, configure all that later. You must specify the IP address for the defense center here in this uh, in this phase. Uh, so make sure you, you'll know what your IP address is for your DC. And then once you do all that, um, then you'll be done. And then the next step is to then uh, configure the, uh, the VMware specific settings.